Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys some more about inserting information into a database. So in the last tutorial, we kind of looked at the basics of inserting information. So we have our table here, it's the student table. And down here, we kind of looked at how we can insert information. So we can say insert into the name of the table and then values, and we can pass in the values. Uh, we could also say insert into the name of the table and then over here we could specify what information we want to insert and then here in the values we just insert that information so we've kind of been using this uh, photo over here of this like you know student database and i actually just went ahead and wrote out all the code for inserting all of these different students into the database so you'll see we're inserting jack who's a biology major kate sociology uh, Claire, who doesn't have a major. Uh, there's another one named Jack, who's also a biology major, but you'll notice that it has a different primary key than this guy up here. And then there's Mike, who's computer science. So these instructions will actually insert each of those students into our database. And you'll see over here when I run this select asterisk from command. So with pop SQL, if you just click on the SQL statement and then you click run, it'll go ahead and run it for you. So you'll see down here, we get all that information. So our database is set up and that's sort of like the general use case, right? That's like we set up our database table and we're just straight up inserting information into it. But there's some other stuff we can do. Namely, we can actually set up our database table in order to make it easier for us to insert elements or to control the type of information or the type of rows that we can insert into the database table. So uh, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually just gonna drop this table. So I'm just gonna say drop table student and we're actually just gonna start over. So uh, again, with pop SQL, all you have to do is click on the uh, SQL command. Like I could click on drop table right here and then when I click run, it'll go ahead and drop it. So now if I tried to select all from the student table, you'll see it says there's no such table. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys how we can create this student table in order to make it a little bit uh, easier for us to insert stuff. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is something called not null. And not null will basically allow us to define that a particular column in the table cannot be null. So let's say that when we're uh, storing our students, we don't want the student to be able to have a null name. And null is basically just a value that represents no value. So if something is null, it means that it doesn't have a value. So let's say that we always want the student to have a name no matter what. Well, after I say name verchar20, uh, what I could do is I could say not null. And I'm just putting that right after here. What that means is this column can't be null. So if you insert a row into the table, you can't insert null for a name. I could also do something else which would be unique. So unique is another keyword which we can use. And basically what this is gonna mean is that uh, the major field has to be unique for each row in this table. So if somebody else or another row in the table has the same major as another entry, then that will get rejected. So not null and unique are actually pretty useful. So now what we can do is we can actually create this table. So I'm just gonna click on this query and I'm gonna click run and you'll see that we get a success message. So we were able to create the table. And so now why don't we start populating this table with information? So I'll come over here and I'll click uh, insert into student uh, Jack biology. So we're gonna insert Jack and then we'll select the table and you'll see that Jack got inserted just fine. Let's click on this second one, Kate sociology. So we'll run this. And again, we'll just select all from the table. You'll see both of those got inserted. So now we get down here into this next one. So insert into student. Uh, so for Claire, we're inserting in student ID and name. But let's actually switch this up. So why don't we get rid of this? And instead of saying uh, this, why don't we, we'll give her a major. So we're gonna say that Claire's a chemistry major, but we're actually gonna get rid of this name. So instead of saying Claire, I'm just gonna say null here. And you'll notice up here, I said that the name cannot be null. So when I created this table, I specified that the name field cannot be null. So if I come down here and I try to insert a student with no name, with a name that's set to null, and I click run, you'll see that we get this error and it says you have an error in your SQL. Um, and basically what that means is we can't insert in a value here that's null because we specified that it can't be null up here. So you're actually not gonna be able to do that. Now, we also over here on this major field, we define that it has to be unique. So if I come down here and I try to execute this line, so you'll see we're trying to insert, uh, this person's name is Jack and they're a biology major. But 
we already defined one person that was a biology major up here, right? It was this first one. So if I try to enter in another biology major, it's going to give me another error. So I'm going to click run and you'll see down here it says duplicate entry biology for key major. So it yelled at us because we entered in a duplicate entry. So not null and unique are really good ways for you to kind of control uh, the data that gets stored on the table. And actually, uh, funny enough, if you have a primary key, a primary key is actually just an attribute or a column on the table that is both not null and unique. So a primary key is basically just something that's uh, not null and unique. So there's a couple other ones. So we're actually going to drop this table again. So I'm just going to click drop table and we'll go ahead and drop the table. And over here, I'm going to create the table again, but we're going to give this some other uh, stuff. So these are actually what we would call constraints. So I would say like a constraint would be that it's not null or that it's unique, but there's a couple other constraints uh, that we can add that I want to show you guys. So let's say that we wanted to set a default value. So uh, let's say that if somebody didn't enter in a major, we wanted to be able to give them a default major. Well, I can actually say that something uh, has a default. So I can come down here and I could say after major, default and then inside of uh, single quotes, I can just type in what I want the default to be. So in our case, if somebody doesn't provide us with a major, why don't we just say that they're undecided? So uh, basically, if the major field is left blank, we'll say that the person is undecided. So then down here, why don't we go ahead and insert a student into the table that doesn't have a major. So here we can just say insert into student and we'll go ahead and specify that we're going to insert in the student ID and also the name but you'll notice that I'm not putting major in here, which means that we don't have to give this a major. So now we'll get rid of Jack's major. And when I go ahead and run this, you'll see that we got a success message. And if I was to select all the entries from the student, it says student ID is one, his name is Jack, and his major is undecided. So because I didn't insert a major, it's going ahead and populating that major for us with the value undecided because that was the default value that I placed over here. So that's another really useful uh, constraint that we could put on this. All right, so there's one more of these little constraints that I wanna show you guys, and it's actually really useful for uh, working with primary keys. So uh, you'll notice that the primary keys for all of these guys were like one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, right? I like manually went in and incremented all those primary keys. But what you can actually do is you can have the database do that for you. So I could come over here and right here after uh, student. So remember student ID is the primary key, right? We define that down here. I could come over here and say auto increment. And auto increment is basically going to specify that uh, the data that gets inserted into here is going to get automatically incremented every time we add one in. So I could actually come down here and instead of inserting a student ID, I could just leave it out. So I could just insert the name and the major, and then I can add that information in here. So Jack is going to go ahead and study biology. And actually, let me get rid of these so we can kind of see how this works. So I can copy this for another one. And we'll make this Kate and she's studying sociology. So you'll notice that I'm not actually inserting the student ID, right? All I'm inserting is the name and the major. But because we said that this table was going to be auto incremented, in other words, because we said that the student ID was going to be auto incremented, um, we don't actually have to do that. So I could come down here and I could run this and actually, whoops, I have to create the table again, my bad. So we're going to create the table and I could insert in this first entry, Jack, who's a biology major. And I'll run this and you'll see it says uh, one row affected. And then I'm also going to insert this next one, which is Kate, who's studying sociology. So I'm just going to click run. And so now I've inserted both of these students into the table. And if I select all from the student table, you'll see down here that we get both of these entries. But Jack has an ID of one and Kate has an ID of two, even though I didn't rigorously specify that. Right. So I didn't actually add in the IDs for either of these guys. And yet they still showed up down here in the table which was pretty useful. So that's a great way for you to just like automatically increment like something like a primary key or really any other row in the table by using auto increment. So those are just a couple uh, little things that you can do uh, when you're creating the table. We would call those constraints. So you can add constraints onto the specific columns of the table and that can control like what types of information can be put inside of there. So that's just a little bit more of an advanced way for you guys to uh, insert information into the database.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.